A one dollar burglary, that will change the lives of so many people. Christine Baker was fatally shot during a burglary at her home on December 17, 1982. Two days later, on December 19, 1982, law enforcement officials arrested Robert Streetman, Johnny Johnson, David Kirk Kendall, and Gary Holden in connection with a series of thefts of agricultural equipment. While interrogating the four theft suspects, officials discovered that the men had also been involved in the Baker killing. Later that evening and early the following morning, Streetman gave statements and signed a written confession implicating himself as Baker's killer. One Holden and Kirk Kendall also gave statements detailing their involvement and identifying Streetman as the triggerman in the murder. All four men were indicted for capital murder. Of the four, however, only Streetman was eventually tried for and convicted of capital murder. In exchange for his testimony at Streetman's trial, Holden received 10 years probation. Kirk Kendall in exchange for a plea agreement and his promise to testify, received a sentence of 45 years in the Texas Department of Corrections. Authorities granted Johnson immunity. Neither Johnson nor Kirk Kendall personally testified during Streetman's trial, although the state read Kirk Kendall's statement to a jury. The state trial judge initially appointed Michael S. McNeely to represent Streetman. McNeely was inexperienced in handling contested criminal cases and had never before tried a death penalty case. Because of his lack of experience, McNeely requested the trial judge to appoint an experienced attorney to assist in preparing and trying the case. In response to McNeely's request, the trial judge appointed Robert S. Coe, who eventually served as de facto lead counsel at trial. At the guilt stage of Streetman's trial, the state presented only four witnesses, Ralph Osborne, the chief deputy sheriff of Hardin County, Texas, Niall Henry Baker, the victim's husband, Gary Holden, and Clint Parr, a friend of Streetman. The state's first witness, deputy sheriff Ralph Osborne, testified on direct examination regarding his investigation of the Christine Baker murder. Osborne's testimony focused on finding Baker's body and determining from the physical evidence at the scene that she had been murdered. On cross-examination, defense attorney Robert Cuff elicited testimony from Deputy Osborne indicating that Streetman Holden and Kirk Kendall had each signed statements giving consistent accounts of the Baker murder and admitting their involvement. The state's final witness, Streetman's friend Clint Parr, also testified that Streetman had admitted during a conversation the day after the murder to having shot a woman. Although defense attorney co cross examined each state witness, he declined during the guilt phase of the trial to call any defense witnesses on behalf of Streetman. The jury found Streetman guilty of murder and, after hearing evidence on punishment, returned affirmative answers to the special issues, submitted pursuant to Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Consequently, on August 10, 1983, the trial judge sentenced Streetman to death by lethal injection. On direct appeal, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals affirmed both Streetman's conviction and sentence. Both of Streetman's trial attorneys testified at the state of Edentia rehearing. Attorney Co testified that after discussing the case with Streetman and Streetman's family he determined that no basis existed for challenging the validity of Streetman's confessions. Based on Streetman's confessions and the statements made by Kirk Kendall and Holden, Co concluded that Streetman was certain to be found guilty of murder. Co testified that this conclusion led him to adopt a trial strategy intended to focus on reducing punishment by emphasizing the lesser punishment received by Streetman's equally guilty accomplices. 
disrupt the prosecution by bringing out the most damaging evidence in its least prejudicial form. Establish that the victim and her husband were involved in criminal activities thereby lessening jury sympathy for the victim. And emphasize that Streetman had had a troubled and disadvantaged life and was deserving of sympathy. Attorney Coe's co-counsel McNeely, in contrast, testified that he thought Streetman might be acquitted. In particular, McNeely testified that his investigation revealed that Streetman's confessions were involuntary, thus were inadmissible. The state district court ordered an evidentiary hearing on Streetman's writ application to be held the next day on February 4, 1986. At the outset of the hearing, Streetman's habeas counsel moved for a continuance arguing that additional preparation was necessary in order to conduct a meaningful hearing. Following the evidentiary hearing, the state district court denied Streetman's application for a writ of habeas corpus. Streetman then applied to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals for a stay of execution and writ of habeas corpus. Because a statement of facts from the state district court could not be transcribed before Streetman's scheduled execution, a temporary stay of execution was granted. Streetman's execution was originally scheduled to take place on February 6, 1986. On February 3, 1986, Streetman, now represented by different counsel, filed an application for a writ of habeas corpus in state district court. At the same time Streetman moved to withdraw and recall the warrant of execution. In his state habeas corpus petition, Streetman asserted that he received an effective assistance of trial and appellate counsel. Streetman's state habeas corpus petition focused principally on Coe's conduct during the guilt stage of Streetman's trial. Specifically, Streetman's attorney argued that he needed time to subpoena witnesses and to discuss matters outside the record with his client. Streetman's attorney stated that he had been contacted regarding the case only a few days before, on January 29. The court nevertheless denied the motion concluding that counsel had had a sufficient opportunity to prepare. The court cited the fact that Streetman had signed the habeas corpus application several days ago, on January 29, 1986. Robert Streetman was executed on January 7, 1988 in Texas. Robert Streetman, a high school dropout who murdered a woman in a $1 burglary, was put to death by injection. The execution was delayed three hours by confused state officials. Mr. Streetman was pronounced dead at 3.26 a.m., seven minutes after the lethal drugs began flowing. It was the first execution in the nation in three and a half months. He had no final statement, replying only, No, sir, when asked if he wished to make a statement. The execution was carried out after state officials, concerned that a late second appeal to the United States Supreme Court might have been pending, halted the execution about two. 10 a.m. as Mr. Streetman was being strapped to a litter in the death chamber. Half an hour earlier the Supreme Court deadlocked 4 to 4 on a request for a stay, apparently clearing the way for the execution, but a spokeswoman for the High Court, Suzanne Ward, said no second appeal had been filed. Robert Streetman was the 94th person executed in the United States since 1976 the 27th person executed in Texas, and the 32nd person executed by lethal injection. Thank you for watching Death Row.